Hello, good evening, Danitza. How are you? Is everything okay? Great, that's great to know. So let's begin with the class, please, Danitza. I'm listening to your voice just a little bit low. I don't know if it's the volume, but let's just start by the following, please. Uh, for, as always, I want to know if you have any questions or details about the last lesson. If you have questions, please let me know. If not, try to give me, please, in this case, you, Danitza, a short summary of what you remember about the previous class that was about reflexive pronouns. So what do you say? First, if you have questions, and second, you give me the summary in case you don't. Um, okay. I think I don't have questions. Yes. <laughs> but, um, uh, what I remember is that there are four types of the uh, applications, first application related to reflexive products, and that's no. all right. Not all of them, but try to mention at least two. What uh, or, or which two or right ways to apply or to use reflexive pronouns do you remember? Not the four of them, just to, to try to remember some of them. Mm, okay, mm, one of them, uh, the last one is with by. Oh, you use by with. Um, the other side of you. Mm, mm, may make something by your own self. Maybe not nothing particular, but emphasizing that point. And the other was, um, um, oh yeah, um, uh, yeah. The second one was related with something that you, yeah, in this case, you, you perform something special or you did something special, unique. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, especially that's good. Have, without description is enough. The first one, remember, you can summarize by when you use by, but plus the reflexive pronoun, you can say it's just to say alone, right? It's another way oh, of yes. saying alone, of any help, right? Uh huh. And the second type is good if you say we also use reflexive pronouns to mention something different, unique, special. Okay. That's also good, right? That's also good. So I don't know if you remember the, the, the examples. I'm going to keep uh, the same, right, that I gave you. And you can say, I, I can use the one for the painting, right? If I say, I painted that by myself, it means I did it alone, only alone, right? Not impressive, not different, not unique, just alone. That's what, what I want to say. But if I say, I painted that myself, it's not that I want you to say to know that I did it alone. No, I just want you to know that, wow, to me, it was impressive. To me, it was different, unique, and I want you to know that, right? So if you recognize those two, those are the two more, most important ones in Danitza. The other ones are related to emphasis in a very similar way. But again, try to practice that on your own. If you have questions about it, you will let me know. But now let's begin with the next one. All right, this is the next lesson that we got and it's past continuous. So I'm also going to ask you, please, Danitza, before we start, what do you know about the past continuous? When is it a good idea to use it, right? Because again, some people, they don't know when to say or when is it a good idea to say, I was traveling or simply I traveled, right? Because you have past continuous and you have simple past. So what do you say? What is the past continuous? What do you know about it? And when is it a good idea to use it? Um, I think the most common use is when you are um, trying to tell a story or 
relate. I don't know. I, I think that's not the word, but yeah, trying to to share something about uh, a past activity and or a situation, and you want to focus. Uh, I want to make a difference between two actions that was performed. Well, that was uh, in that moment. Well, one action interrupt other action, and then you just pass continuous, and you can use then simple pass or before. But it's a uh, good way to use when you trying to emphasize that one action occurs, and after that point and uh, grow or, or yes I think that or while in yeah. so, yes even right okay yes yes I mean I think again I know you have the knowledge and you always show me that yeah I mean all of those situations are great right right uh, events in which we have to use or it's a good idea to use the past continuous so it's perfect right interrupting actions telling stories right instead of relate you can say terror or narrate right when you narrate something or when you tell something so it's also good also perform yes something that was performed i think that was well explained it is good yeah let's try then to practice because you know this we're going to cover the lesson but here i want to do something more active so i'm going to give you some examples that you know but remember, uh, to do this, always try to have windows open, Danica, so that you can think of the possibilities, right? Have one dictionary over there, have a good translator that you believe is the best for you, at least those two, all right? A dictionary and a translator so that you can look for some words as you're trying to tell me a story, right? And it doesn't matter, you can have it open over there, you can type, it doesn't matter if I listen to your typing. The thing is that you have to use that actively, all right? And do it now because it's going to help you, right? Find the word directly and continue with your story because I want you to do that now, okay? We are both going to try to tell stories. We can make, all right, some stories up. They don't have to be real, but we have to try to use this. Okay, so we are going to try to do the following, please, Anitza. You know that the past continuous is the context of a past story, right? So you can say, I was walking on the street, that's your context, or it was raining, that's your context, when, as you were saying, right, uh, you talk about an interruption or something that had happened over there. Right? So I was waiting for the bus when I saw a very old friend right in front of the street. Right, I greeted him or her. I was screaming, right, his name when she or he was able to listen to my voice. Right, he approached me or she approached me and we started a conversation. As we were having that conversation, I saw my boss passing by, right? But I didn't care because the conversation was interesting and we continued. Right after we had the conversation, oh, you left. I'm going to try to go back when you're back again. All right, I'm going to try to wait a little bit more. If not, again, the idea over there was showing how we can use the different tenses in, in past, right? 
mainly the two past tenses that we know. Okay, so you're here again, eh, Danitza. Let me know, please, if you are able to hear to part of the example or the story that I was telling you, Danitza. Let me know, please. Unstable, yeah, I, I hear you. It's very laggy. Yes, I hear that your connection was unstable, right? Can you hear me better now? Yes. Okay, so uh, now let, let me know, please, how much of the story that I was telling you were you able to hear or none of it? None of it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so let, let's repeat just a part of it, okay? Because the, this is, I want you to show or actually I want you to listen to the logic that I'm going to follow to combine the simple past and the past continuous, as you know, right? Because your explanation was perfect, but following the logic that I'm going to show you, then you are going to tell me story, okay. all right? So first let's listen again, very briefly. Again, my story was like this, right? I was waiting, right? You can say, right, the other day, last uh, week, I don't know, yesterday, right? I was waiting for the bus, when I saw an old friend ride in front of me, right? I decided to approach him or her. I'm changing the story a little bit, but again, just as an example, I approached him and we started a great conversation. As we were having the conversation, I realized that the bus I was waiting for was passing by, but I didn't care because the conversation was very interesting, right? As soon as we finished the conversation, we exchanged numbers and we said that we were going to i don't know right go out the next or the following weekend right then we said goodbye and i started again where i went again to the same place to wait for my bus and to go home all right so that's the idea over there i was able to write use and combine different sentences in simple past and in past continuous Right? The past continues always being the context of something, and then the simple past always being definite actions that can finish immediately. All right, or perhaps you don't want to pay much attention to that activity, you just want to mention that as a part of a sequence that you got. All right, but that's more or less the logic. Now, I want you to, you're this is going to be directly that it's a, you're going to have one minute. Okay, you're going to have one minute to organize your ideas. Remember, as I was telling you, it's good that you have your dictionary opened always, your translator if necessary, and you're doing that. We got, all right, uh, the same situation. I hope you were able to listen to the example this time. Let's see when you're back. Okay, I'm going to turn off my camera and stop sharing. That's going to help to the connection as we try to practice this. Hello, no worries, Danitza. I stopped sharing my screen. I turned off my camera. That's going to help at least a little bit to the connection. Let me know, please, if this time you were able to hear to a little bit of the story I, I was giving you as, as an example. I, I heard the story, but no the instruction. What am I supposed to do? That's great, great. No, that, that's the most important part. If you have that, then that's good, all right? Instruction is very simple, then it's enough. Following that idea, you have one minute to prepare yourself. Okay, you're not going to use anything. And that preparation is for you then. So I'm not going to check anything. 
Okay. In that minute, try to prepare a story for me. Okay, try to prepare a story for me. So again, I was telling you it's a good idea that you have your dictionary opened over there, that you have your translator open. Okay, everything should be ready for you in every class so that you can look for words immediately, go back to your, uh, your preparing the, the story, and then you, you know, you have everything ready. So please, in one minute, prepare any story that you want that needs. It can be real, it can be something that you're making up, it doesn't matter. But the idea is that this, in this story, you show me how you can combine the past continuous plus the simple past, all right? So showing a combination between the context of your story and then the main elements, as I was doing in the, in the example. So I don't know if you have questions about that. After the one minute, again, it's only for you to prepare. You're going to tell me the story. Okay, so do you have any questions about that? No. That's okay. Oh, great. So let's do it, please. I'm going to control the time one minute and then you tell me the story. Okay, let's get ready, please. All right, so uh, with that information that you got there or with what you did for preparing yourself, let's begin, please, Danica. I mean, I don't have a limit of time, of time for you. Your story, all right, can last as long as you want. It's not important now. I just want to take a look at the combination of tenses that you're going to perform and, well, how you're going to organize your ideas. Okay, so please, uh, as soon as you're ready, Let's begin. I'm going to be taking some notes so I can give you a general feedback. All right, so Denise, if you're ready, let's take advantage and let's try to tell the story that you have ready, please.
Hello, Danica. Yes, I was just writing you. All right. I was saying the following. In case it's not going to improve, perhaps it's going to be still like that. I'm going to continue recording the class so that you can watch it later on. If it's working now, let's continue. But how, how is it now, Danica? Did it improve? Yeah, so they were, I don't know what it's not usual this kind of um, connections could be oh. yeah it's weird because we've always worked uh, without any problems i think uh, right here so it's weird but let's try all right let's try i don't know if you have your story ready let's try to yeah. take advantage that it's working and let's tell the story that you got this and it's again let's try not reading what you have prepared has to be only for helping you remember what you want to say or to organize your ideas, all right? But let's try to paraphrase and let's try to do it in our own ways. And let's use what you have prepared only as a guide or as something that is going to help you again, remember the structure of the idea, okay? So please, as soon as you're ready, you can begin. I'm going to take notes for those elements and I'm going to give you feedback, okay? So you can start any anytime you want. Okay. Um, okay. Last week, I want to, um, to, um, I don't know, cine, I don't know, center, I think so. <laughs> And I watched Barbie with my third friends. And that was nice because most of them now have jobs and they even run their own business. So this time was so different because while we um we're watching the, the movie. Um, they um, they were responding texts and even answering calls. So that was just a little funny because um, the movie was Barbie. <laughs> they were, they they also. Um, have this kind of situations and uh, at the same time it was really nice because they made space in their agendas to share this moment um, and that, 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 that was the story. Uh, All right, okay, good. Yes, again, it's very short. Again, the main idea is how we are combining the ideas. Now, again, mainly two things, because you got to use these tenses very well, and I don't have main observations, just two details, right? In the first case, this is not related to the tense, but it's not necessary to say the name. But if you say the name, of course, you can make it to the English waiter, and you can say to the center cinema, or you can simply say right to the cinema. Uh -huh. or, it, tell me, eh, Danita? That no, was my first idea, but... Uh... I am not sure. It's cinema, but uh, the pronunciation is okay. It, one more time, please. I couldn't hear the last part. The, uh, you said cinema. Yes, That's cinema. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can say to the films, to the movies, but if you're going to say the name, and again, it's because you are translating the name. Uh, because actually it's weird that it's called, right, uh, Center Cinema, <laughs> or right? Usually you just say the name of the, of the, well, the place of the theater, as in other countries. But here, because it is part of the name, again, if you want to translate it directly, it is going to be that, all right? Again, you can also use Spanish. That's your other, uh, well, the other alternative that you got, but because as it is a Spanish name, you can say uh, Cine Center. Right, and you can do it because again, that's the name that it has, and cine is part of the name. Okay, so your second option in that it says to keep the name the way it is. All right, so center cinema or cine center both work because once again, in this case, that's the name. 
All right, that, that's the first thing. And again, over there, I'm just giving that idea because we don't have to try to be precise over there in case you don't remember the order of the ideas as part of your story. You simply can say, right, to the cinema or to the movies or to watch a film, right? In order to go directly to the point and a, avoiding, right, that unnecessary element of confusion that again, sometimes can create the idea of forgetting what you wanted to say afterwards, all right? So remember always that rule, in case you're not sure about something, avoid it. Try to avoid it and say it differently or simply uh, avoid that idea, all right? Then in the next one, just one observation because you said, right, while we were watching, right, the movie, it's good to watch a movie, yes, that's the verb. Then you said they were responding text or something, right? But you only say text, or texts, but in this case, no, text is going to full work as a, an adjective when you use it. So it's better if you say they were responding to text messages or they were responding all, only to their phones or something like that, or they were texting directly, all right? They were texting on their phones or they were replying to some messages. But again, if you only say they were responding to text or text only, that feels incomplete. And that's, at least, at least in English, that's not going to be a good way of expressing that. Okay, so one, once again, the options would be they were texting, they were texting back some messages, they were replying some messages, they were on their phones directly. All right, that's it. I believe that everything else, again, it was short, but I believe that those are the main two elements that I wanted to, to put over there. All right. So I don't know if you have any questions about that short feedback so that we can go now to the lesson that is very short to improve or to reinforce that knowledge. No, that's okay. Thank you. All right. Good. So let's go to the element. That is going to be our lesson. That is this. We're not going to cover the lesson entirely because we know how to use it, but we're going to try to give some examples. This is the main idea about the past continuous, right? Then it's telling me also turn on my camera. You're going to tell me, please, if you can hear me correctly. In case it is getting laggy, I'm going to turn off the camera or we're going to see how it can work. But this is what you were saying. All right, good. Now, what is the difference? You have the answer over there. But what is the difference of using one idea in the past continuous and one in the simple past and two ideas in the simple past, Danita? Eh, For example, here, the children were doing their homework when I got home or the children did their homework when I got home. Again, you have the response over there, but how can you explain the difference between those two ideas? So we are still having that problem, right? So I'm going to continue with the lesson, as I said, and I'm going to tell you to watch from this part that is, well, actually more than half the class, but let, let's continue, right? So uh, the response again is there. The first one is using the past continuous as the context. So it's the action that is started before and that continues afterwards, right? But if we use only the simple past, you're showing it a sequence of actions or conditions. For example, the children did their homework when I got home. It means that they started with their homework when you got home, after you got home. Okay, so the idea again is different. In this case, again, if we use this to explain, mm -hmm. this is the children were doing their homework, right? Then when I got home. And here is where you got home. 
right? That's the idea. So first homework and then home. But here, this is different, right? Here, first, you got home and then the children started with their homework. They did their homework. Okay, so again, this is the main idea and this is what has to be clear. This and this, all right? The children were doing their homework when I got home. The children did their homework after I got home. So first I got home, then the children did their homework. Okay, so if that idea is clear again, everything else is going to be clear. Then to talk about actions, right? This is also when we use this to talk about actions that were happening at the same time. This is also something that you mentioned, Benitza. So I was driving while she was talking on the phone. Or as you were saying, right, while we were watching the movie, they were texting back some messages, they were replying to some messages, they were on their phones, or they were just, right, using their phones, could be. But that's the logic, and it's great, right? So two elements happening at the same time in the past, right? I was driving while she was talking on the phone. He was looking at his textbook while they were taking a test. Right, that's the logic again, and that's easy because again, you mentioned that I believe it's clear. Then it's a so, and we have all these possibilities in terms of the formulas when and while. When, when it is a good idea to create this combination, right, of past continuous, one simple past, or remember, if you have clauses, you can invert the clause. So, when simple past, comma, past continuous. So the children were doing their homework when I got home or when I got home, comma, the children were doing their homework. Very simple, right? And while it's what we were saying, you can say they were using their phones while we were watching the movie or while we were watching the movie, comma, they were using their phones. That's the idea that you gave me. That's the idea that we constructed at the beginning, because again, you know this, this is just reinforcing this knowledge. Then you can use when all the time, right? So you want, if you want, sorry, while is not necessary, but of course it is a better option. And it's, it's more clear, let's say it's clearer for you. And it's, um, I don't know, it's the better option in that case, all right? In that particular case, it is better to use while for example, with the simple, uh, with the past continuous, sorry. But again, if it is clear, if everything is clear, when can be used all the time, even when you are combining these two ideas, right? Because here, actually, it would be, I was practicing in the park when I broke my leg, okay? That happened afterwards. But in this case, we're exchanging the order, and we can use, right, order words, but it's possible to do it if it is clear. I broke my leg when I was practicing in the park, or I was practicing in the park when I broke my leg, or I was studying for the test when you called me, all right, or something else. But it happens here also. I was doing this when you were doing that. So uh, we were watching the movie while they were using their phones, or we were watching the movie while. In, or when we uh, they were using their phones, sorry. Okay, one more time. We were watching the movie when they were using their phones. So it can be also possible. Again, it's up to you, but while, of course, in that case, it is better. But we know that we can use when, and it's good. Now, use the past continuous in very common, all right? It's very common, sorry, at the beginning of a story. This is what I was doing, right? And you were doing, I believe, in your story. But mainly when I said, right, the other day I was waiting for a bus when, or last week I was waiting for the bus when I was doing this, I was walking on the street, I was doing my homework, I was, I don't know, right, completing that report when this happened and that happened. So we decided to do this and that. And as we were doing that, this happened also and that and that, right? So it's always like the context and it's good to use it at the beginning of the story to understand what was happening, all right? So once again, 
The other day, comma, I was waiting for a bus when, tell the story, last week, comma, I was driving to work when, or this, or that. Then, for something that happened before and after a specific time, okay, that's when you use the past continuous. So it was eight o'clock, I was writing the letter. So this is important when you want to clarify that an action was already taking place, all right, before that time, but you want to say that at that exact time, all right, this action was in progress already. It means that writing the letter didn't start at eight o'clock. It started before eight o'clock and it will continue perhaps, or it continued actually, right, not will. It continued after that time, okay? We don't know the idea is just the idea of continuation of progress at that specific time for something that happened again and again, right? This is kind of routine, but not exactly one routine. But at least temporarily, this action was being repeated. I was practicing every day, three times a day. Okay, so that was something that you were repeating. You don't consider that to be a routine because you don't do that anymore, perhaps, because it was not that common or it, it didn't last all right long. So if it didn't last long, it's only going to be a repetition with the past continuous. We were meeting secretly after school. That was happening at that time, but that's it. Uh, they were always quarreling or fighting or arguing, right? That's again, something that happened in repetition, but that's quite it, all right? Of course, we have to remember that we have action verbs and non-action verbs, right? I'm taking a look at the phone just in case. All right, so we have action verbs and non-action verbs. If we are talking about continuous tenses, we have to talk about uh, action verbs, all right? You know that we can use, it is possible to use uh, those action verbs in the continuous tense. That's why here we can talk about change or growth because it is progress. So the children were growing up quickly. <coughs> okay, sorry. Their English was improving. My hair was going gray, and my, the tongue was changing quickly. In all those cases, we got the idea of action, something happening over there. And once again, remember that some of them are non-action verbs. If they are non-action verbs, it doesn't matter that the idea is over there, that you can see there, or that you feel that at the moment, in the past, of course, we are not going to talk about progress when it's non-action. It has to be simple, right? When I got home, I really needed a shower. Of course, at that moment, you felt that. So you perhaps want to say that in progress, but you never say I was needing a shower. No, no it's not correct. I really needed a shower. Okay, so remember, the non-action verbs that we know cannot be used in continuous tenses. So of course, the past continuous is not the exception. You cannot use non-action verbs in the past continuous. Okay, that's it. I want to take advantage. Please, you're going to watch the class. I know that this lesson is clear, so I'm going to give the introduction and perhaps cover most of the next lesson that is shorter and in a certain way simpler because it's related to only <coughs> preference. Okay, so... Again, after you watch the class, the next day, please, you will let me know if you have any questions. Okay, now let me close this presentation and let's go to the next one again, that is preference. Okay, so this is the second one, very short. Let's cover this as well. And again, anything else, anything extra that we have to practice, we will do in the next class or the following classes in general. 
Let's talk about preference, and we will start with would rather. This is a very common expression to talk about preferences, but only, or in most of the cases, let's not say only. In main, all right, uh, the main reason to use would rather is when you have alternatives, options, choices over there, not general preference. If you always prefer, right, something, you don't use would rather. Because would rather again is just for a temporary preference in which perhaps that's not going to be your main thing, but between those things that you have to choose from, that's what you pick. All right. And again, if that's the case, would rather is a good idea. So it says, I would rather stay home, not because you always prefer that, but in that specific situation, you would rather do that. I'd rather play tennis. Again, not in general. We have to imagine that this is part of options that you got. And that's why, again, this is just introduction to know how to use it. But because of the things that I'm saying, it is very common to use this with options. Even if they are part of the question or not, in your response, you can mention the two options. So you say, I would rather go to the beach than study on such a nice day. Hmm? So again, the same logic, right? We are still following the same logic, but here we're more obvious. It's more clear because we can see the, the options, the choices that we were talking about. I would rather be rich than poor. Okay, so it means that we can use base form as we were able to see here. We have to use the verb in the base form or a noun, right? Sometimes a noun directly, uh, but uh, the base form is going to be the, the thing that we use. We don't use infinity. We don't use gerund. We have to use base form after would rather. Okay, now, besides you or stating a preference for you, you can talk about someone else. And you can say what you prefer in terms of someone else doing something. We use here the simple past because it's the subjunctive form of that verb. It is not past. This is present. Okay. When you say, I would rather you drove home, it means now. I would rather you drove home now in the present, even in the future. Drove is the verb in the simple past in terms of grammar, but it's not past. Okay. It's the only way to express subjunctive in English. In Spanish, we have a specific word for the subjunctive. We don't use the past, okay? We use the subjunctive, but in English, we don't have that word. We don't have the subjunctive conjugation for verbs. So we use the simple past, okay? So for example, now you can say, I would rather you help me with this. I would rather she started her project now. I would rather he ate that pasta, all right, uh, in a couple of minutes, all right? So we're using simple past, but again, the idea is present. And that's what we are clarifying in our note. Then, if it's simple past, the grammar structure that we use, if it's negative, of course, we have to use didn't. And of course, we're still talking about someone else. So we say, I would rather you didn't eat that pasta. I would rather she didn't, what? Watch that movie, okay? I'm talking about now, remember. We're using didn't, but that's just the subjunctive way of saying that in negative, that's it. So here it says, right, very simply, I'd rather you didn't do that. Remember, present. So do you mind if I stop to do some shopping on the way home? And you reply, I'd rather you didn't. Okay, now, I'd rather you didn't do that now. I don't want to miss the beginning of the hockey game on TV. <laughs> All right, so both are related to the same idea. It's just that this is showing the affirmative formula and conjugation. And this is showing the negative way. But again, we're talking about someone else. We're talking about our preference, all right, related to another person. 
But again, going back to the wood router that we know just for us, if it's negative, it's very simple because we only use not, right? I'd rather not catch a bus. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather not go to that place. I'd rather not dance today and so on and so forth. All right, so again, the idea is exactly the same. We're just using this for ourselves. This is a preference when we got options, right? When we got choices, but only for ourselves, not for other people. Okay, now that was wood rider. Remember, we use wood rider mainly when you have choices, when you have alternatives to choose from. That's why we usually say, I would rather do this than that. I would rather buy, I don't know, right, a motorcycle than a car. I would rather travel to this place than, all right, travel, yes, to this place than this other place, something like that. Or when you talk about preference that, includes or involves another person, right? I would rather you did this. I would rather you didn't do this. Affirmative negative, and if it's negative in general, it will be with not, right? I would rather not do that. I would rather not stay home, okay? That being clear, now we go to prefer. Now, let me check actually because I'm, I'm using some, oh, it's good, okay? It's actually, <laughs> the time I can use the five extra minutes. So prefer, prefer now differently to what we were doing with would rather. This is general. Okay, if you're talking about something that you always prefer because that's your general preference, use prefer. Don't use would rather. Okay, this is what we say here. And the main difference also besides that one that I already mentioned is that here we use infinitive and gerund, right? We don't use the base verb. Remember, I would rather do this than that, do base verb. But here, this is general preference. You say, I prefer to do this. I prefer doing this, okay? So to do or doing, but you don't say only do, okay? We don't use the base verb here. We have to use infinitive or gerund. And there you got the two examples, right? I prefer to eat at home, I prefer eating at home. Now, even though this is general preference, you can still compare your general preference to other preferences. So you use this combination. Prefer noun to noun. So I prefer hot chocolate to tea. I prefer this to that. Okay, something to something. Then you can use the gerund. And if you use the gerund, you combine that with two as well. I prefer drinking hot chocolate to drinking tea. I prefer traveling alone to traveling with friends. Okay, I prefer doing this to doing that. That's the idea. Then if you use the infinitive, you change. You don't use to, you use rather than. I prefer to drink hot chocolate rather than drink tea. And after rather than, we use the base verb. Okay, so this can be tricky. One more time. If you use infinitive, <coughs> sorry, with two elements, after the infinitive, you use a um, rather than, and after rather than, you use base verb. So I prefer to drive home rather than take a bus. Okay, that's the idea, a, <coughs> sorry, a, with prefer. Very general, very basic, prefer is for general preferences, okay? That's it. I prefer to eat fish every time, okay? I'm not talking about specific options. So every time I prefer to eat fish. Now, if I don't have that option, right? And they tell me, hey, we don't have fish, but we have this, we have pasta, we have meat. I can say there, right? I would rather eat uh, pasta. Okay, so in that specific preference with choices, not about my general preference, I use would rather. But we have one more, and with this we finish would prefer, that is actually very similar to would rather, because this is not used for general preference. This is used for specific, all right, preferences. For specific things, again, and very likely you got options to choose from. Okay, so I would prefer 
and after perf would prefer in this case you have to use infinitive or noun and you have these questions would you prefer spaghetti or fish for dinner that's noun would you prefer to catch a bus or take a taxi uh, home after the party that's infinitive okay so infinitive or noun and also specific situations not general situations and you can reply right i'd prefer to take a taxi home so again the main difference would prefer is like would rather but the thing that changes is what you can see in the note we don't use the base form we only use the base form in would rather would rather plus base form prefer plus infinitive or gerund and would prefer plus infinitive or noun if you follow that uh, well logic you're going to do it perfectly and rather than as we were using it would prefer right you can use rather than to mention more than one thing okay to mention the two options that you got i prefer to go skiing this year rather than go on a beach holiday and remember the rule if you use rather than you have to use the base verb afterwards okay you don't say rather than going on a beach holiday no rather than go even though you have to use infinitive with would prefer you use go after rather than you use base verb after rather than okay and that's it again i wanted to cover that because that's mainly practicing on our own and we don't need to see that in detail but once again we can still cover this lesson in case it is needed we can still all right ask the questions that we got tomorrow actually on friday so that we can practice what we need all right i'm finishing the class now because it is time i'll see you the next one to practice together to continue with the next lesson.